Hey guys, welcome back. Luca here. And today I want to talk about how would I future prove myself in this type of economy. As we can see, the ChatGPT technology is like definitely revolutionary. So I would say, yes, like this GPT will create a tons of opportunities. When I browse LinkedIn, for example, I see so many startups that's using these GPT technologies, having OpenAI making this into a service that makes it a game changer. Now, a lot of these smaller companies can use these applied AI as a service for their products, which is pretty crazy. Like if you think about it, these were the things that was monopolized by a lot of these bigger tech companies. That's what made them so out of reach because of these heavy research. But now having these services, definitely a game changer. So I would say in the next five to 10 years, there will be a lot of full stack or new roles that's catered towards using these APIs. Having, so I would say right now, it's actually a really good time if you are someone who is interested in this space, but also want to pick up some relevant skills. I would say doing personal projects just to get familiarized with some of these open AI APIs and definitely be familiar with how to use these APIs. That's something definitely a plus. Because as someone who's a general software engineer, we, we not expected to be building these AI tools, but we should be able to use them and ask the right question. So I would say definitely look into these. There will be new opportunities. There will be more startups that grow into a bigger company that will be rely on these GPT frameworks. And having an early head start might be something that can separate you from other developers. Another advice I have right now is probably one of the worst time to do a bootcamp. Because the goal of a bootcamp is to, you know, you go to the bootcamp and afterwards there's some sort of career fair. And then you're hoping to get a job right outside the bootcamp. Because that's the whole point of joining these type of bootcamps, which whereas the economy right now is so bad, and I would rather you wait until the economy gets better and more companies are hiring again, then start these tech bootcamps. Because right now, I don't think joining these bootcamp will be a win-win situation for everyone. So definitely avoid bootcamps. And if you are someone who wants to learn, I would say there are a lot of courses online on YouTube that's available to teach you and get yourself familiarized with these technologies. And next up, a college degree is definitely still very, very solid. If you are someone who's already on track and in school studying these, then keep going. Try to take relevant courses, try to take things that interest you, and also make sure to take algorithms and data structure because those are the ones that benefit you the most during interviews. So try to set yourself up for when the interviews do happen, like you have enough resources, knowledge about how to answer some of these questions. And the other question I get a lot is, should I pursue like a master or PhD? In my opinion, master is pretty much equivalent to a bachelor's degree. If you have to pay extra just to get a master, like I wouldn't say it's necessarily worth it. In my experience, no one really cares if you have a master or undergrad, like the, you only becomes like more valued if you have like a PhD. So I would say, if you are someone who's thinking about getting a master, I would say if you already have relevant skill, if you already have a bachelor's in computer science, then like I wouldn't say a master is necessary. But if you are someone who's really interested into a specialization field, then a PhD is almost always required at some of these bigger companies. And clearly, as I can see, like some of these higher education jobs are still being hired by these companies because there's still a lack of supply. Because many people come to a realization, oh, I can just get a six-figure job after a bachelor's degree. I don't need to go for a PhD. Like, that's a waste of time. So because of that, there's still a lack of PhD candidates in some of these higher specialized fields, such as machine learning, applied AI, for example. And another advice I have for a lot of people is, for example, myself, I don't really like writing lead code. I don't really like reading through the green book. But maybe right now is the best time because I can pace myself. Right now, since a lot of these companies aren't hiring, if you're already positioned in a job or some sort of opportunities, then maybe now is the best time to commit maybe five to 10 minutes a day to study some of these LECO questions because of compound interest. And by the time these tech companies are hiring again, you can simply just review some of these questions very fast because you already did the heavy lifting at some point in the past. So I would say this is a great opportunity to refresh some of these knowledges, start practicing these questions, especially if you prefer to have a longer period of time to prep for these things. Like, of course, like there's no perfect way to future-proof yourself. And many people who say like, oh, there's a 100% future-proof way. I don't believe that. The, one of the best things you can do 
you, not even if you have a PhD in some of these hard fields can guarantee you to have a future-proof job. But I would say if you are very specialized in something and have a track record, then you're definitely more desirable and more future-proof than someone who are not. So I would say building relevant experiences and just have an overall long history of years of experience are keys. So I would say software engineer is something that if you keep practicing, if you keep doing it, either personal or side projects, like it's all great ways to keep your skill set sharp. Because tech is something that's very, very transferable. And I would say like that's probably the best thing we can do help ourselves become more future proof. So I would say if you are someone who just starting software engineer, started tech career, and you are looking to find a job, I would say right now, of course, it's not gonna be easy, but keep applying. On LinkedIn, there's a job posting section. Those are very useful resources. And nowadays, there are also a lot of people on LinkedIn sharing links and useful tools. And the second thing will be Google Jobs. And something else that I wanna to recommend to a lot of you is the YC career page. YC is kind of like an incubator where they fund a lot of uh, startups. And here, a lot of these startups are still looking to hire their first, second software engineers. And I would think these are some of the best opportunities for a lot of us. So I would say right now, it's one of the best time to apply to these startups. I mean, it's already not so great. Big techs aren't really hiring. And even if you work at a big tech, you still feel like you're at risk. You might get laid off. So I would say right now is actually one of the best time to work for these startups. So if you have the opportunity to, definitely look at this YC career page or any other startup hiring pages. They will surprise you how many of these small to medium sized companies are still hiring. So definitely keep applying, don't give up. Another thing that we rarely mention is the fact that a lot of software engineering positions can also be considered a contractor roles. If you follow a lot of digital nomads, people who travel, you can clearly see a lot of them works on a contracting basis. And right now, a lot of companies might still look for these contractor roles because it's less of a commitment. So I would say if you are someone who's looking into tech or thinking about looking for opportunities, definitely look at these contracting roles as well. Because right now, big techs aren't hiring. If you're not wanting to work for a startup either, maybe these contracting roles makes a lot of sense because you still get to practice these skills and get you positioned for when you want to apply for a company that you want to work for. So yeah guys, I hope this video was helpful. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you guys next time.